Shocking pet headlines. You want them? We've got them. Joining us today to discuss them is the star of Amazon's Pet Doctors of Atlanta. Welcome veterinarian Dr. Arvid Edward. Okay, so our first shocking pet headline. This is a medical mystery involving a two-year-old Michigan Beagle named Rex. Until recently, he had been suffering from daily nosebleeds, sneezing sessions for about six months after an incident chasing a rabbit. Beautiful Rex was going through a lot of trouble, right? And the problems persisted. Rex was put on a bunch of different meds. A CT scan then found the problem. A five-inch long twig lodged up his nose. Ouch. Dr. Edward, ever seen anything like this? <laughs> Well, looking at that stick, first I'm gonna say this. Anything up your nose for six seconds is a long time. <laughs> this was up his nose for six months. Oh. Poor thing. So, but we see it all the time, and you know, in dogs, that's the most common pet we see it in, because they're always walking around with their nose to the ground. And these sports breeds, like Beagles, Labs, Goldens, they chase after anything with wreck and abandon. So, and anyone that has a Golden know if you throw a tennis ball, he'll go through the drywall going after that tennis wall. <laughs> so, I'm thinking this Beagle was chasing this rabbit, all he saw was the rabbit, and he went head first into a bush or some brook, you know, Gosh. and that stick goes right up the nose. For it to get up there and stay intact as it was and yeah. not be rec not be able to Without notice that physical exam. At, at the time, that's surprising. Well, apparently, I guess when he came back from chasing the rabbit, that's when the owner noticed some bleeding in the nose. And so I don't know if he thought he got kicked by the rabbit or what, but, <laughs> but he was tough route. Yeah, well, Norm, wouldn't you, you would have expected also to see maybe some increased mucus production in that side. Because with little kids, same thing can happen. They'll, they'll lodge a crayon up their nose or right. something, and you'll notice foul smells over time. I'm shocked that that, that twig, yeah. after six months, it looks like it just, like, like it's a, brand new. It doesn't it like look a, like it's it. It's like a pencil. Well, and that's the last thing that I'm thinking anyone expected to find in the dog's nose. Man. And so, yeah, but you're right. A lot of times when you see this, you'll get a sudden onset of persistent sneezing that just comes out of nowhere. Like one minute they're not sneezing, the next they're sneezing. And in his case, he had these nosebleeds. Oh. And they tried medication after medication and just never got better. So you have to knock them out, though, to A lot of times them. you do a rhinoscopy where okay. you pass a scope up the nose and look in there, and it has pinchers. So if you see it, grab it. you grab it and you pull it out. But if it's been in there for a long time, scar tissue can form called a granuloma, which prevents can, you from seeing now, it. Now, Rex, we are so glad that you are doing better, pal. I want you all to now look at a different photo. This is inside <laughs> of a dog's mouth. Oh. This is Bailey. It went viral. What you're seeing are between 30 and 40 Asian ladybugs that have attached themselves to the roof of the poor dog's mouth. Oh, Dr. Edward, what's going on here? What does that do? Does well, let me, let me explain just a quick background, because I know everybody's thinking your average cute ladybug. Yeah, they... they f That's not them. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what these are, are, these, are these are Asian lady beetles. Yeah. And in the 1960s, 1990s, they were brought over to eat aphids, which are small insects that suck the sap out of plants. Plants, right. And they damage crops. So they were released in the south to stop this because they were damaging the pecan and apple pie, and that's what, or pecan, apple pie. Pecan and <laughs> yeah. apples, yes. okay. and that's one thing you don't mess with I in the family. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we'll, Doc, we'll get to that pie in one second, don't worry. Yeah, yeah. You don't mess with pecan and apple pie. So they brought in these ladybugs to eat these insects that were damaging the crops. Huh. And so now, that's why you don't typically see them in the city. But if you live in an area that's rural where you have a lot of crops, there's a potential for this to happen. Well, why do they attach to the hard palate like that? Well, they attach to any of the mucous membranes in the mouth, so anything pink in the mouth they'll attach to. And so when you do that, if you eat or move with your tongue, they think they're being threatened, and as oh. a defense mechanism, just... they have a yellow fluid that they secrete from their leg joint. So they just Ugh, take that, and this fluid gets in the mouth and causes symptoms consistent of chemical burns. So it corrodes the mouth, Ooh. it gets infected, get holes and bad odor. Poor and, Bailey. Um, so yeah. so this is one where you would have to visually scrape it off. inspect and look and then mechanically scrape, scrape it off. Yeah. So yeah. I think the takeaway here is if you do live in a rural area and your dog is having oral symptoms and you see these, get it taken care of sooner rather than later. So I'm, I'm assuming they attach over time they do.